So, in the previous lecture, we proved Udasan's lemma. And today we shall prove uh, teacher's extension here. So what does it say? So let x be a normal topological space. in X be a closed subspace. Okay. So then there are two assertions. So first let F from A to minus R R be a continuous function then we can extend f to a continuous function So what does it mean? It means that there is a continuous function this which is this capital F such that F restricted to A is equal to this F we started with. So let us prove this. So prove. So we will use Urison's lemma. construct a sequence of continuous functions f ends from x to minus r r which are uniformly Cauchy. So I just want to define what this means. Right? For every every epsilon positive, there is an n such that for all i comma j greater than or equal to n and for all x in x we have absolute value of f i f j of x is strictly less than epsilon. So this will in particular imply that for every x, the sequence f n x n greater than equal to 1 is Cauchy, is a Cauchy sequence. So given such a uniformly Cauchy sequence, let us try to show that we get a continuous function. So, so since, so lemma.
given a uniformly Cauchy sequence. of functions on x, we get a function f from x to minus r r and f is and this f is continuous. So let's prove the continuity of f. So proof of lemma. Right. So uh, it's clear how we get this function f. So for each x, the sequence f n x and greater than equal to one is a Cauchy sequence. in this interval minus r comma r and so it converges to a point which we define to be f of x okay so how to define f is clear so let us show that f is continuous so let us show that f is continuous. So we will sketch a proof of this. So let's say f of x is somewhere over here and let's take a uh, epsilon neighborhood of f of x and we need to show that f inverse of the ball around f of x of radius epsilon is open in x, right? So let's choose any, choose y in this open neighborhood. Right? So f of y lies somewhere over here, right? So now uh, let's look at this equation. Uh, so mod f of y minus f of y prime. Uh, so this we can write as, so let us write this as And this is less than or equal to oh, sorry, this should be f of y. So, uh, since the fn's are uniformly Cauchy, if n is very large, then f of t minus f n t is, let us say, less than delta by 3 for all t in x. Right. So, this will imply that uh, for n large, this f of y minus f of y prime 
is going to be less than equal to. So, this quantity and this quantity are going to be less than delta by 3 right. So, this is going to be 2 delta by 3 plus mod of f n y minus f n y prime. Okay. Uh, but now as f n is continuous as f n is continuous there exists a small neighborhood around y. So, let us say w such that for all y prime in w f n y minus f n y prime is also strictly less than delta by 3 right. So, this will imply that uh, for all y prime in w we have absolute value of f of y minus f of y prime is less than equal to delta by 3 ok. So, uh, is less than equal to uh, delta sorry in fact strictly less than delta but ok right. So, now if we choose delta appropriately then this will imply that. So, if we choose delta very small such that the delta neighborhood of f of y is completely contained inside this upside neighborhood of x. So, this will imply that for all y prime in w we have y prime is contained in this b f of x. So, first is contained in uh, f of y comma delta ok. Uh, so, so, this is actually strictly less than delta uh, which is contained in b f of x comma epsilon right. So, this implies that mm, so this what we have proved is if y belongs to f inverse of this open set this open set then there exists an open set w containing y such that w is completely contained inside f inverse of p f of x epsilon yeah so this implies that f is continuous So, this proves the lemma. Okay. So, now uh, using this lemma, we will prove uh, Tietze's extension theorem. Now, so, let us continue with the proof. So, it suffices to construct a sequence of functions f n. So, uh, first let us construct. f 1 from x 2 minus r comma r right. So, for this we divide the interval into 3 parts right. So, this is minus r uh, this minus r by 3 this is 0 this is r by 3 and this is plus r ok. So, we call this i 1 r this part is called i 1 r this part is called i 2 r and this part is called i 3 r ok. So, i 1 r is defined to be minus r comma minus r by 3 and i 2 r is defined to be minus r by 3 comma r by 3 
and I three R. Right. So then this minus R comma R is the union of is I one. Right. It's the union of these three. Okay. So as this I one R and I three R are disjoint, it follows that uh, F inverse of these two. Are disjoint. Right? So it is joint closed subsets. Of A. Right. So recall that small f is a function from A to minus R comma R. Right? Okay. So uh, So by Urson's lemma, there is a continuous function g from x to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 such that G of f inverse of this i one r is equal to minus r by three, and G of f inverse of i three r is equal to r by three. Right. So note that we had proved Urson's lemma for uh, in statement of Urson's lemma we had a function f from x to zero one, but obviously zero one is homeomorphic to minus r by three comma r by 3. So, we easily achieve this also. Uh, so, let us denote the restriction of g to a by g sub a. Okay. So, we claim that the supremum f minus g sub a the infinity norm this by definition is uh, supremum a in a f of a minus g a of a we claim this is less than equal to 2 r by 3 uh, so let us check this. Right. So suppose uh, x is in f inverse of i one r. Right. So then, so, so sorry. Suppose a. Then then f of a belongs to minus r comma minus r by 3 and by definition g of a is equal to minus r by 3 right so g of a is this value minus r by 3 and f of a lies somewhere over here so obviously the difference between these two is less than or equal to 2 r by 3 so it's okay in this case right uh, similarly if x a is in f inverse of i 3 r then f of a belongs to r by 3 comma r and g of a is equal to r by 3 right so it's okay in this case also right finally if uh, if a belongs to f inverse of i2 r then f of a belongs to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right and of course g of a is also in this interval so we are okay in this case also right 
So, this proves this claim that this happens. Okay. Uh, so, so let so now let us define f1 we define from a to minus 2 r by 3 comma 2 r by 3 is is defined as f1 of a is equal to f of a minus g of a right so we have just checked that uh, this f1 is uh, this makes sense it's a map from a to minus 2 r by 3 to 2 r by 3 okay so uh, we repeat the above process so using f1 we construct a g2 right so if this was g1 right so we repeat the above process with by replacing f with f1 to get g2 right so in other words we would have proved that this infinity norm of f1 minus g2 uh, is going to be less than g2 let's say g2 restricted to a uh, is going to be less than equal to 2 by 3 into 2 r by 3 right so this is equal to 2 square r by 3 square right uh, so but when we substitute for f1 so this implies that the norm of f uh, minus f1 is this thing minus g2 infinity is less than equal to two square r by three square. Okay, so we go on when as we proceed like this. So at each stage we get a gi from x to minus 2 i minus 1 r by 3 i comma 2 i minus 1 r by 3 i right this interval such that uh, when we look at this norm g1 minus g2 minus minus gn this norm is less than or equal to 2 to the n r by 3 to the n <laughs> okay so we construct the sequence of functions gi which have this property right and uh, so this is on a this is we are taking the restriction of all these gi's to a okay so let f n be equal to the function g 1 plus g 2 plus plus g n right. So, then f n's f n is a function from x 2 minus r comma r right and it is easily checked that one f i s are uniformly Cauchy two on a f i s converge to f point wise right so this obviously follows from this so using the lemma on uniformly Cauchy uh, sequence 
we get that the fn's converge to a continuous function f continuous and uh, fn restricted to a converges to f but it also converges to f restricted to a which implies that f restricted to a is equal to f okay so this completes the proof of part 1 right so given a function given a continuous function f from a to minus r comma r we have extended this to a continuous function f from x to minus r comma r. Okay. Next let us prove the second part of the theorem. So let us prove the second part. So we are given a continuous function f from a to r. Right. So fix a homeomorphism. phi from r to minus 1 comma 1 right and define f tilde to be the composite f and then we apply this homeomorphism phi right so then so f tilde is defined to be phi compose f right so as minus 1 comma 1 is contained in this compact interval so this implies that f tilde is a continuous map from a to minus 1 comma 1 and using the previous part we get a continuous function capital F tilde from minus 1 to 1 such that F tilde restricted to A is equal to F is equal to this F tilde ok. So now uh, we want to slightly modify this and get an extension of this F as a continuous function from x to r. So how do we do that? So let D be the closed subset f tilde inverse of minus 1 union f tilde inverse of 1 right. So as f tilde of a is equal to f tilde of a this contained in minus 1 comma 1 this implies that uh, a in does not meet d right so thus there is a continuous function h from x to 0 1 such that uh, h of a is equal to 1 and h of d is equal to 0 Right. So, consider the function. Now, we have two continuous functions f tilde and h. So, we take the product. Yeah. Consider the function. So, the product is continuous because both of them are continuous. h times f tilde this is from x to minus 1 comma 1. Right. 
So we claim that uh, the image is in my the open interval. Okay. So we claim that the image is in the open interval minus one one. So why is that? Uh, if not. there exists some x such that uh, h of x into f tilde of x uh, is equal to plus or minus 1, right. Now, the only way this can happen is that, so this implies since h of x lies between 0 and 1 and f tilde of x has absolute value less than equal to 1, the only way this is possible is that h of x is equal to 1 and f tilde of x is equal to plus or minus 1, right. But if f tilde of x is plus or minus 1, then x is in d and h of d is 0, right, which is, which is a contradiction. Right, as uh, f tilde of x is equal to plus or minus 1 on d, only on d, and h of d is equal to 0, right. So, therefore, the image lands inside this open interval, right. So, we let f be equal to h times f tilde, right. So, then f is a continuous function from x to minus 1 comma 1. Right, and uh, f restricted to a is therefore equal to h restricted to a times f tilde restricted to a, but this is equal to f tilde restricted to a, uh, which is equal to small f tilde. Right, uh, so thus, uh, so we have f from x to minus 1 comma 1 and we compose it with phi inverse part right. So, let us see what we get. So, phi inverse compose f is from x to r right and phi inverse compose f restricted to a is equal to phi inverse compose f restricted to a this is equal to phi inverse compose f tilde but note that f tilde was equal to phi compose f is simply equal to f right. So, thus phi inverse compose f is the required extension. So, this completes a proof of T says extension theorem. So, we will end this lecture here.